Before I start this video, I want to ask a question. What makes this shot work? And DC's equivalent of this moment not work. For me it's simple, one of the shots shows a team, another shows simply individuals. But what makes the Avengers an actual team whilst Justice League missed the mark on actually what it means to be a team? In this video I'm going to look at why Justice League failed in creating an actual team and Avengers succeeded. So let's start. Personally, I think the major problem in Justice League is not having solo films for all the members of the team before the actual film was released. Marvel did well here in actually introducing every character in the universe and establishing their motivations. Tony Stark feels regret over what his weapons company was doing and has an attack of conscience. Steve Rogers has a heart of gold and is trying to find his place in this world. Thor is trying to mature and wants to stop Loki on his path of destruction and cares for the Earth after his previous adventure there. Bruce Banner just wants to help without being the Hulk. Natasha Romanoff and Clint Barton don't have much motivation, but they are background players in this story, which is fine for a team-up film. My point on this is why is Aquaman Aquaman? Why is Cyborg Cyborg? And why is Flash the Flash? Why do these three new characters want to help the Justice League and be superheroes? Why do they help and protect people? Without this ever being established, it's hard to buy into this team dynamic. We have a scene with Bruce Wayne and the Flash, and the reason the Flash gives is he needs friends. But when he is faced with danger, he becomes very scared and doesn't want to fight. It's never established why Barry Allen actually helps people and why he wants to help against this threat. He states to Bruce Wayne he's never done battle, but we have already seen the Flash fight bad guys in Suicide Squad. It's very jarring for the film to not readily establish what their characters' motivations are. This is also the same with Aquaman and Cyborg. I don't understand why Aquaman helps people. He seems very distant and he doesn't want to be involved in anything, but at the same time he's helping the common man. Has he been doing this for a while? And what made him do this? If he's an outcast from Atlantis, what was his original motivation? And why isn't he just a villain? Cyborg does have some motivation though, in that the Parademons took his father and he wants to save him. But this is about all the motivation we have for these three characters to help the Justice League. Overall, I just don't understand why these characters are actually heroes. What makes them want to do good in the world and not just be villains? All their personalities just seem to merge into one. There are no real defining differences between the team members, except perhaps the Flash. But that is the real question. What is their defining characteristics that separate each character in the Justice League? Whilst I know there are different characters, they are not as well defined and fleshed out when compared to the members of Avengers. Iron Man and Captain America are two vastly different characters in the Avengers compared to say Wonder Woman and Batman. When Wonder Woman and Batman discuss bringing back Superman, I think either character could have the other one's motivation. Wonder Woman could be all for bringing back Superman and Batman could be against it. From a story point of view, both characters could be written to have opposing views and this means they are not very well defined characters at all. What is the difference between the first encounter with Steppenwolf and the second, apart from Superman showing up in the second fight? In both fights, the members of the Justice League work as individuals and are easily defeated by Steppenwolf. I mean, he just brushes them aside like it's no contest. Usually how team-up films like this work is you have the initial encounter where our heroes lose and then they learn to work together and win the second encounter. It's Storytelling 101. Avengers doesn't have an initial encounter with Loki, although Cap and Iron Man do fight him and win. The Avengers do become split as a team though by Loki. They then learn to work as a team in the final confrontation after being inspired by Samuel L. Jackson. Now, a perfect example of this is during the New York fight and Iron Man is flying around the city. We see everyone working together. Each hero is bouncing off one another 
other Iron Man uses his blasts on Captain America's shield for him to take out some aliens. The team is working together and we are understanding how they actually work better as a team. Their powers actually complement one another and we realise Iron Man is stronger with Cap next to him and vice versa. Working as individuals, they are not as strong but as a team, they are far stronger. Compare this to Justice League where all of our heroes just attack Steppenwolf again. One by one, there is no discussion on how they'll approach this fight. In fact, the only real moment I can think of when the Justice League use their powers together to complement one another is this. Right ain't over yet. I'm mad. We are not understanding how the Justice League are actually stronger together and it feels that they'd be better off just going into this fight one by one. Aquaman and Wonder Woman kind of fight Steppenwolf together but they are not using each other as help. They're both just going in with punches and then just trying again. When Steppenwolf easily brushes one aside, just the other attacks. There's no discussion between these two characters to build some sort of relationship and team dynamic. And this is where you realise there's no point for the Justice League. Justice League's plot revolves a lot around bringing Superman back to life, as this is the only possible way the Justice League will ever be able to defeat Steppenwolf. Once Superman's revived and flies off with Lois Lane, the team appear to accept defeat and basically say all hope is lost against Steppenwolf and the team admit they are ready to die together. I thought personally how the story would go now is the Justice League learn to be a team and do hold their own against Steppenwolf with Superman being the one who then turns the tide in the team's favour. That's quite a classic story beat, not particularly inventive but I would have been happy with that. The Justice League learn to work together and give the viewers a sense of an actual team, while Superman being on screen completes the team. What we got instead just negates the need for Justice League. As mentioned, Steppenwolf easily defeats all members of the team, they stand no chance whatsoever and put up little fight being completely outstrengthed by Steppenwolf. Superman then shows up and instead of having a difficult fight with Steppenwolf, after everyone who has faced him before has been easily swatted aside, Superman's easily able to defeat Steppenwolf, who's actually offering absolutely no defense against Superman. It was like watching Mayweather vs Nasukawa, two completely outmatched fighters, and you are left wondering, why did they even have this fight? My point is, Aquaman and Wonder Woman combined were not strong enough against Steppenwolf. In fact, they were completely outmatched. But Superman against Steppenwolf, is apparently zero contest for Superman. And before this moment, Flash is shown to be working hard to save four survivors in a car and is very happy of his work at the end for him to only look to his side and see Superman saving a whole apartment block of survivors. Superman has completed both aspects of the Justice League's job 100 times better on his own and without the help of the team. So my question is, what do the other members actually offer the team? Sure, Cyborg was able to start splitting the mother boxes, but he still needed Superman's help to split them apart. The Justice League appears to revolve around Superman. Without him, they're a useless group of superheroes. It doesn't feel very much like a team. It seems like they can only win a battle when Superman is there. If he's not, they're completely outmatched and outgunned. Compare this to the Avengers, we see what each member offers the group. Captain America offers the team leadership and strategy going into battle and he can inspire others. Thor brings his knowledge of the other worlds and of course a mass amount of power. Iron Man is the tech genius and is nimble flying around the city. Hulk, well Hulk is just the brute force. The point is you understand everyone's part in the Avengers and say what you like about Hawkeye being rubbish. He played his part in scouting on top of the buildings and relaying to the team when aliens were going too far out and instructed Cap and Iron Man to bring them back around. This is a perfect show of teamwork. We the viewer now understand each hero's role within the team and that everyone has a part to play. In Justice League, apparently you just need to kick back and let Superman deal with it as he's just so overpowered compared to the other members. You feel if there was a fight within Justice League, Superman would swat everyone aside. But if any members of the Avengers fought each other, you feel everyone would have a fairly fair fight. I think the biggest takeaway from the Justice League is we do not understand every member's role within the team. 
and why they are actually in the Justice League. The film was definitely harmed by a lot of reshoots, but I highly doubt the Snyder Cut would have been any different and would have been more of the same after Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman. The Justice League at no point learn how to work together, which is usually shown in the third act of a film. The film tries to have this moment with Aquaman when everyone shares a laugh, but this scene falls flat and is meaningless in my opinion, as there has been zero setup leading up, and I just don't understand the motivations of everyone in the room. My biggest question is, why do Flash and Aquaman want to help people? It's never fleshed out and I don't understand why they even join the team, other than the plot just demands it. This is where solo films really help to flesh out your characters. On my first viewing of Justice League, I actually came out of the cinema having a pretty good time, but since then my opinion has changed on the film and I've seen it twice more and realised it's quite boring and really does nothing in setting up an actual team. In my opinion, you could switch the personalities of each hero and they would still be fairly the same character. Everyone seems fairly bored and just phoning in their performance, which is just a huge shame. This was a huge missed opportunity for DC and it's a shame that this fell so flat. Hopefully they can pick it up if there's another sequel and just improve the film a lot more. Thank you for watching.